and welcome back to the Nasty Talks. Yes, we are back after one week of break because, you know, I've been busy. We are back with a guest. Our guest for today is Diana. She is Romanian like me, so you're going to hear some very interesting things today. We are going to be talking about open relationships because Diana is in an open relationship with her boyfriend. And she is going to spill the tea about everything that is going on in their lives and how they are making this kind of relationship work. So, let's get nasty. So, hello everybody and welcome back to the Nasty Talks. Today we are having a very special guest. Her name is Diana and she's Romanian like me. Whoa! (laughs) Welcome! Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy you're here and let's get into it. Yes. Yes. Uh, I want to know a little bit about yourself. Tell me who Diana is. So Diana is soon to be 25 years old. Mm. She just finished her first year um, of um, bachelor here in Denmark. She's studying uh, engineering in global management and uh, manufacturing. And she's in a noble relationship. Oh, spicy. <laughs> a bit, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would like to know more about this open relationship, Mm -hmm. but maybe first tell me a little bit about your relationship background and the people that you've dated. Yes. So I would say that I started dating uh, quite early Mm -hmm. around, uh, I had uh, the first relationship started when I was around 15 years old. Okay. And that was my first uh, boyfriend, like serious boyfriend. Um, we've been together around two years and uh, I had my uh, first uh, sexual relationship uh, with him. He was also my best friend at that time. Then um, at some point, yeah, we just understood that we are on other pages. He was much uh, older than me also mm. with six years older than me. Okay. Yeah. Then once we broke up, I just had some uh, few flirts here and there. Then I had, again, after half a year, another serious relationship of two years. Then we broke up. Then we got together again for one oh, year. Okay. <laughs> and uh, that was my second uh, serious relationship. And in the gap, in the one year gap between uh, like when we were uh, apart, we didn't talk at all so we didn't meet at all uh, okay and i had my blast of sex uh, <laughs> uh, encounters and the experiences okay. and oh, that's so nice. yeah so that was when i got to know more about sex and try mm-hmm. more things um and then uh, we got again back together and it was always monogamous up till then yeah and would you say that it was much better the relationship that you had after you've broken you've been broken up for a year in some ways yes for the reason like the things that made us break up uh, initially like after the two years they got solved so we worked upon those but other things came up so Mm. we just understood that okay uh, we want uh, good for each other but it's we are not made for each other so in the end or at least one side thought of that which was me yeah. so it wasn't really like a uh, consensus on uh, on the breakup but yeah. yeah and afterwards i had again some fun met some interesting people uh, and then got to norway and uh, met my uh, actual boyfriend that i have now we've uh, started dating and we've been in a monogamous relationship for uh, more than one year and then at some point we switched. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how did that happen? How did it, did you decide it to, you know, get into an open relationship with him? Yeah, that's interesting. So the fact is that we've been together and living together for uh, the whole period that we almost knew each other. So after we met and we had the first dates, we stayed for like two months, three months apart. Uh, where we were dating and meeting from time to time and then we moved in together and we've been the whole corona uh, time uh, living 24 out of 24 together and it was a blast Um, 
And after that period, when we decided to come to Denmark from Norway, I uh, decided to go to Romania for two months because I wanted to get my uh, motorbike license driving. Oh, that's uh, really cool, actually. Yeah, <laughs> and um, that's when it happened, actually, because we've been all the time together. When I got to Romania, it was a bit of, okay, a known territory yeah. and fresh uh, things. And then at the motorbike course, actually, I met... Um, this guy that uh, was actually from my village mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he got my interest a bit so I felt a bit attracted to him mm -hmm. and it was just a thing of seconds so nothing happened and so on but you could feel that tension that okay he also saw me as a woman and uh, yeah. attracted there by me there was this kind of connection yes. yeah. exactly and um me and Matthias, we've been, Matthias being my boyfriend, yeah. we've always been uh, transparent or at least try to be as transparent with each other. Yeah. So in that moment, I was like, okay, either I keep this for myself or I'm being honest as we agreed and I will tell Matthias, hey, for a few seconds, it was something there with this guy. Mm -hmm. So I took it up with him and I told him and that opened up a lot of questions and a lot of uh, conversations uh, upon that. And at, actually it was him that said, what if we would try to like, what if you go for it? Maybe just a kiss or maybe just to see how you feel. So we kind of mm -hmm. just tried our toes in the water first, or yeah. at least me. And it was scary when he asked because I was like instantly like thousands of questions are coming yeah. to your mind. Like, how will I feel? How Matthias will feel about that? What yeah. if I will feel too good? What if I will want more or... Yeah, it was just a flood of questions uh, coming uh, into your mind. But then that's how it started and uh, actually I acted upon it. So next time when I met uh, with a guy, I flirted a bit more and yeah, things just uh, gradually like started to happen really fast afterwards. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for how long have you now been in an open relationship? Now it's uh, one year and a half almost. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's quite yes. a long time. Yes. Yeah. And it's still working, so it's definitely possible. Yes, uh, definitely for us. Uh, it just it just got us to another level. We we were trusting each other. Like first of all, Matthias, I think is the first boyfriend that I have that I completely trusted. In in a way that. I just knew that no matter what issue I have or not matter what I want to tell to him, I am able to do that. Yeah. But um, getting things to another level with the open relationship requires even more trust, if that's possible. And for us, it was... Um, it opened things that we weren't aware that maybe we don't talk about with each yeah. other so now we are just two open books and that's that's amazing mm -hmm. and i think that's that having that trust and being that open about no matter what like whatever crazy thought goes through your mind uh for whoever whoever you get some attraction or mm -hmm. we are just open to say it out loud and to talk about it and yeah yeah that's great and I think it's also the communication, right? Because I think yes. a lot of people in, monog in monogamous relationships, they have issues by talking about their feelings and, you know, just different situations. Yeah. And when you're in an open relationship, it's, I think, crucial to be able to, to do that. Yes, and that we had since the beginning, um, the communication. And that's something that I was looking for into a yeah. boyfriend. Uh when we got together, it wasn't, I wasn't planning to have a boyfriend. So it was out of nowhere, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, but when I, uh, when I felt like, okay, I want to be with this person, then I just knew that the communication has to be just to the top because 
main of the things that happened through, uh, between me and my ex-boyfriend were due to lack of communication. Yeah. And we weren't on the same page. We didn't communicate about that. We didn't really like... We were having plans of maybe getting married at some point. And, but we didn't know each other, actually, mm-hmm. because we mm-hmm. weren't talking. Uh, it was more a superficial relationship, right? I, I wouldn't say it was superficial because we, we really cared about each other and we really loved each other. We also experimented a lot together. We a bit mm-hmm. grew, grew up together because we, we were colleagues in high school. And then, yeah, during university, I think he got a bit more jealous and that opened up different things that... And I was a person that I always, when we had an issue, I tried to talk it out and Mm. to see the end of it. But he was a person that just couldn't open up and didn't know how to approach uh, this issue. So we always... Uh, built up issues uh, mm-hmm. upon issues and every time that we had a new thing to uh, discuss about everything else was coming from yeah. uh, from back behind yeah so that led up to just having a, a lots of things un, uh, unfinished and mm-hmm. untalked about so for me communication it's really important mm-hmm. i I understand that and I think it is for a lot of people but the problem is that not a lot of people know how to do it. Yes, that's true and actually we, I mean I'm getting a bit ahead here with the news but um, we were couple dating at some point with this couple that Mm -hmm. um, is much older than us, like at least like yeah, uh, 10-15 years older than us. Yes, and it was so interesting to see the way they communicate they Mm. don't they don't so i was like they are not in an open relationship they are uh, swingers Mm -hmm. but it was like um like a cold shower for them to see our level of communication even if we are together only for like uh, two more than two years two years Mm. and a half and their level of communication after 15 years which was down to almost zero and seeing us and seeing that is possible pushed them being more open and communicate more and talk a bit more about how they actually feel yeah in in order to understand each other and in order to see how they can work on the issues that they have yeah that's really good that's really good that you were able to kind of influence them in a positive way yes it's it's really nice to see that you can do that and we weren't thinking up to that point that we we might help some other people but that's why we also um decide to be really open about us being in an open relationship if someone asks we are always like saying it uh, directly because we think that it might help a lot of people how so how was this experience with the swingers so uh, the thing is that uh, it was up to now it was the the only time that we did this Mm-hmm. Um, we were uh, dating for a few times because I had some uh, skin issues so my confidence about really going sexual about it mm-hmm. wasn't yet there mm-hmm. So we d- and uh, I was just open with them that I'm not uh, at that point yet so I would like to meet anyway and have some dates if they would like so so actually we met and we went for dinner and mm-hmm. for some wine and it was really nice because it, even if we knew that nothing will happen sexually, it was there the tension in between us to meet uh, another couple. And it was just, it was like a regular date, but Mm -hmm. there were four people involved and talking about each other, what we are interested on and Mm -hmm. so on. And we did this for like two or three times. And Mm -hmm. actually once um, it happened that we also ended up in bed together. Uh, so that was really interesting it Mm -hmm. didn't really end up the best way uh, because they had this issue with the communication so they had some issues in there that they could we could clearly feel them Mm -hmm. and also see them so at some point uh, meanwhile we were uh, having um, yeah sex together 
she kind of just uh, froze and at some point uh, she was like, I need to leave. So it didn't end it up the best way, but mm. we are still in touch and we are still connected with them because for us it's important with this open relationship not just to get together to meet and have sex with other people but also to be build some relationships with like-minded people mm -hmm. so we are really also friends with them so yeah. that's really interesting that really and nice. really nice to see that you can really actually separate these two things sometimes we meet just as friends so we met also we've been at their place to make pancakes met their kids and just kept it completely casual and mm -hmm. uh, on a friendship level but then when we are into that mood of sexual tension and so on we can get into that that's so cool that yeah. you can that you can have this kind of relationship and you can yes. split between it yes uh, it's really nice yeah. it's really really nice yeah it's really interesting it, mm -hmm. and it's a whole new world <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i can imagine uh, and have you had uh, any threesomes or something like that with your boyfriend? Well, yes, uh, we had one threesome um, with uh, another guy. Actually, it wasn't planned by us or anything. It was mainly the other guy that kind of okay. contacted me, saw that I'm in an open relationship, mm -hmm. I think on Tinder or something. Mm -hmm. But we didn't match there. And um, he wrote to me on Instagram and he was like, hey, I'm in an open relationship. I would like to meet if you want and so on. But it was just a matter of me and him meeting. Yeah. And then when uh, the weekend came to maybe meet, I was like, hey, my boyfriend is uh, coming over to Udensem and this guy is living in Weile. And I was like, if you want to meet, we could all three meet and go to some event that we were planning to go but otherwise I, I won't come and he was like that's fine you can both join and we went f uh, we went there with a the plan to go to an event but then we stayed home at his place and had a dinner and wine and once that was done and we felt really comfortable with each other mm -hmm. we got more in a private uh, environment like uh, in the saloon where there were like some candles and more like dim down lights and then we started talking more about uh, feelings and uh, relationships and so on and then at some point um, my boyfriend went to the bathroom and he started to massage me and mm -hmm. we started to kiss so when my boyfriend came back we were kissing and he was watching us and then from there it just evolved to a threesome mm -hmm. and it was amazing <laughs> wow that's really nice yes so we had a threesome but that was the only one so far we are planning to have more and maybe to try also with a, a girl um mm -hmm. i'm a bit I'm still thinking about it. I'm not okay. yet sure how I will feel about that because I'm a person that likes a lot of attention. Yeah. So I'm a bit selfish when it's about sharing uh, the attention that I should I should have. Yeah, I understand But um, that. I, I want to try and see how it is. Mm -hmm. Um, you can also maybe have a lot of communication with the other girl and see what she likes because yes. maybe I think she would probably like to give you attention as well yes so then you would have like double and, and attention here I, and here I come with uh, with uh, with a thing we had a five sum oh so uh, with two couples and one other girl okay uh, and how was that? <laughs> let's say it was intense, very intense, I would say. Uh, we, the other, actually, the, we were talking mainly with the, we were talking with the other couple to meet, to just have a couple date. But this couple, they talked also with this girl that was coming from Germany to visit mm -hmm. Copenhagen. And like, out of nowhere, we all met at some point where we were having wine and this girl saw them and she was like, said hi to them. And then uh, we, they were like, could she join us? Uh, do you mind? And then we were like, no. But actually then we felt kind of a bit more of a connection with that girl than with the couple that we okay. talked. But we all ended up at this um, couple's place at home and things got really intense on the balcony it was a really mm. hot day and uh, we drank wine and ev ev everyone was looking at everyone in a sexual way um 
I felt a bit too much attention that, that day because I felt like a lot of attention from each of the person was coming towards me. Yeah. So I like attention, but that was a bit too intense, I would say. But it ended up like they are having a spa and they were like, oh, would you like to have some massage? So we were like, yeah, that would be nice. But then that massage wasn't a massage anymore because mm-hmm. they were really into just going for sex. Mm-hmm. And me and Matthias, I think we got a bit, uh, not scared, but a bit like turned off because yeah. we really like to build and to work it up to that point. Mm-hmm. So we were really looking forward to have these massage sessions in between to lead up to uh, this more tension. Mm-hmm. But... Um, yeah, it wasn't really like that. So for me and Matthias didn't really work well. The girl had sex with uh, this uh, guy and um, she gave me an oral. So mm-hmm. I was happy in the yeah. end. Um, but we kept the connection with the girl afterwards, but not with the couple. Okay. So now we are talking with her and planning because I really feel like she's also like uh, really into me, not mm-hmm. uh, not only into Matthias. So then yeah. she's also interested in giving me pleasure. Yeah. So then I could work with that. <laughs> yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, that would yeah. be really really nice to to do that. But uh, how do you feel about you know Matthias being with other girls? Like, it, are you are you having a little bit of jealousy sometimes? Uh, well, sometimes I think it's in- inevitable to to not feel jealous. I am a very jealous person in general. So also. Be- Especially before in a monogamous relationship, I was really jealous. When I was with Matthias at the beginning in the, our monogamous uh, phase, um, I had several moments when I was jealous. Mm-hmm. And I had much less, actually, since we are in an open relationship. And it's really interesting to see this switch mm-hmm. that um, I'm so uh, such a jealous person, but an open relationship actually calms it down. And I think it's because then I'm in control of what's happening. I'm in control and I know when Matthias is attracted by someone because he's letting me know. I know if he's going to have sex with someone and then I'm, I'm, I'm cool about it. Mm -hmm. Of course, even like when he's meeting with a girl, like you are thinking about it, like, Mm -hmm. okay, what are they doing? What are they trying? How does she feel? How does he feel? Are they really a good match? And then I'm also thinking, is she having better boobs than me? Uh, Is she having, you know, like sometimes, especially with the things that, for example, I have small boobs. And since Mm -hmm. I was a a, a kiddo, I always wished for larger boobs. Mm -hmm. It was just something that I had since I was a kid. Because I feel like since I was a kid, I had this more of a... Interest, interests about sexual stuff and mm-hmm. uh, yeah and maybe you also had a little bit of insecurities regarding your you wanted to be more feminine maybe boobs would make you um, more feminine you think? no, no I, I, I always felt feminine but mm-hmm. I was just mesmerized about okay. boobs in general mm-hmm. I, I had my older uh, sisters that they were having friends uh, coming over and all of them had these really nice uh, larger boobs mm-hmm. and <laughs> but I really love like I love to watch them so I'm always the first question that I think I have always for Matthias when I win with yeah. another woman how are her boobs <laughs> <laughs> and it's really fun to see because it's not something that I'm get um like jealous on mm-hmm. or that I'm get oh like I don't know, annoyed because someone else has uh, larger boobs or uh, mm-hmm. nicer boobs. Or rounder. It's just, or... I'm, I'm just getting excited and also like maybe sometimes thinking, okay, those look like perfect boobs. Sometimes we take photos and so on mm-hmm. when we are someone else. And I'm like, hmm, I might get at some point one day some <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, why not? Like... You know, if you if you really want them, then I think you should get them. Yeah, I, I I'm on the idea that you have to feel good with yourself. Yeah, uh, I am at the point where I accept my small boobs and I accept that this is my body and that's how I am. But because I accept this, I'm also considering that at some point I might act upon my dream of having larger boobs, and mm-hmm. I'm yeah. 
I encourage also other people to just go for what they feel and what they think they it would help them to boost maybe their confidence or just uh, have something that they you know I think in a way it's like when someone um, is born for example with uh, let's say male genitals but they always feel like they are more feminine so Mm -hmm. they feel like they are more of a woman inside of them that's how I felt with boobs I was born with small boobs but I really feel like damn that that should be part of me larger (laughs) boobs so (laughs) one day I might act upon it (laughs) Yeah, I mean, why not? It's also about the experience, you know. You yes. experienced small boobs and maybe yes. you want to also experience larger boobs. Yeah. yeah. But then maybe if I get a threesome with uh, um, with some girls and so on, I can play with their boobs. Yeah. <laughs> so then you can... You can, you can have I boobs. can balance yeah. you it. Can yes. Also have boobs. Uh, yes, yeah. exactly. That's nice. Yes. That's, a ni- that's a nice thought. And how... And how do you feel when when Matthias tells you that you know he's gonna have a date or he's gonna have sex with somebody? Uh, I'm pretty cool about it. I think uh, I'm just asking him like, okay, uh, have you talked with the girl more? Like, how is she? Who is she? Is she? Does she know we are in an open relationship yeah. or not? Um, yeah, I'm just curious w- about what's the case, and then I also sometimes get excited or Mm -hmm. horny about the thought of it so Mm -hmm. it's interesting to see especially when he is with the person and i'm thinking okay now matthias is with this girl damn i'm getting sometimes really horny and then Mm -hmm. i'm starting starting to play with my uh, my toys or uh, just uh, going on tinder and (laughs) swiping (laughs) swiping or finding someone or just going to some of the uh people that i usually date Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, depends on how much uh, it's uh, it has an impact on me because sometimes if I get really uh, uh, the feeling of being jealous and being alone maybe in that Mm -hmm. moment because your partner is with someone else then I might either like just be self-aware and be like okay it's normal Uh, I just uh, and I just read a book or uh, try to get my mind somewhere else and then just talk with him afterwards uh, because we talk about everything uh, uh, once that uh, we finish with the date. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm really not able to control myself, then I'm uh, calling a friend and Mm -hmm. having a good time as well. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's a healthy approach to yeah. it, I think. Yeah. And but is it hard for you to tell him that okay, I'm going to have a date or when it's time for you to explain mm-hmm. that, you know, I've had sex with this guy and it was like this and it was like this, do you no. have a little bit of insecurity no. or what is he going to feel? I don't. I yeah. had at the beginning. So yeah. at the beginning it was really hard. Um because since the beginning Matthias was like I want to know everything. And I want to know how you feel and all the steps, how what happened, how it mm-hmm. happened, uh, what did you try, and uh, yeah, yeah, everything. everything so yeah. imagine that you have a regular date, you go and have sex with someone, and then you just have to explain everything to someone else. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> with all the details. And that someone else is the person that you love the most and your partner. It, yeah. It's... At the beginning, it's just your brain It's not used with that concept and Mm -hmm. you feel guilty and you feel like um, maybe that you break the trust of the person or maybe that you are not worthy of uh, of your partner because I was the first one trying this. So at the beginning, I was like really... After the first time, I was questioning like... um, Am I am I doing wrong? Like, did I do something wrong because I acted upon my instincts of having some feelings for someone else or mm-hmm. some getting attracted by someone else? Like, I was like, that happens also to other people, but they don't act upon it. Yeah. Why do I have to act upon it? Why did I act upon it? Yeah. So at the beginning, it, it was a lot of questions and it's normal because you are doing something that you've always been told you're not supposed to do. Mm-hmm. That it's... Exactly. I've been also growing as a religious person. So 
that's a scene only the thought of it or only feeling attracted by someone else that than your partner it's a scene so yeah. it was it was a lot to take on for matthias he didn't have these things because he wasn't a religious person mm -hmm. so for him it was actually more natural than it was for me for me i had a lot of inside fights with myself and i had to work a lot upon those but then I had also the side of me that I'm always, I like to just see men getting attracted by me. Mm -hmm. And I, I just like that game of playing and being mm -hmm. flirty. And I always missed that when I was in a monogamous relationship. I didn't act upon it, but I always had that feeling, oh, I would like to be able to just go out now and flirt with someone. Mm -hmm. And that was something that it was you know it was interesting to have these battles with yourself that you like it but also that maybe it's not good what you are doing yeah. but then i just thought um, a lot about it or uh, talked with matthias about it what his uh, what are his thoughts and of course at the beginning it was more hard like it was hurting also more for him because of course it's the person that you want for yourself and she's trying new things with someone else and he didn't really said it to me especially because we were far away then and then he thought that okay let's see how it goes uh, further away to not just say it right now uh, but I could feel it as well so you do feel if the if your partner is hurt or something yeah. but the, at the beginning it was more like okay let's try and see how it goes and if it's getting too much then we will stop but then trying it and meeting with other people and then talking about it again and again and I also have a really bad memory so it was mm -hmm. also for me like a lot of exercise to remember everything that was mm -hmm. happening because you usually have taken notes yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh yes trust me like uh, it was so hard because usually i'm this person i'm living in the present and then i'm forgetting it mm. i'm like not forgetting it but i don't remember everything yeah. and i don't have the need to go back and fantasize about it meanwhile matthias he's a person that fantasizes a lot mm -hmm. so he goes back to those memories all over again i'm not like that uh -huh. so for him he already had this kind of exercise of going back to what happened mm -hmm. and he for him it's really easy to tell me uh, when he meets someone how it goes and all the steps that they went through, yeah. through and how he felt, how she felt. For me, it's like an exam. Like I have to remember, like really focus and remember how it was. Oh. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, do you have any guys that maybe you went on dates with and mm -hmm. you then, then you ended up having sex with them and you kept the connection? So besides Matthias, since you're in an open relationship, you maybe have this, um, maybe men. To, to really keep the connection to a level where we are really good friends, mm -hmm. no. Uh, talking uh, from time to time, yes, uh, yeah. I do. Um, now, actually, I had uh, two months ago, I met uh, someone on Tinder and uh, we started like by being really like sexually and so on but we had a really nice connection so now we are more actually like friends than anything else sometimes we still have some tension but we are keeping it to a really like friendship level mm -hmm. so i think with this person for example we will remain friends hopefully I'm, yeah. i really hope so because sometimes you do really meet people that you would like to have them in your life also after having fun and uh, yeah yeah but sometimes it's difficult because for example i had this uh, person with whom i had a lot of fun and we also um work kind of friends but then he said he met a girl and he started to date with her and then when he told her about me he was like she was like, okay, I don't want you to talk with her anymore. Like, okay, yeah. because I mean, 
I understand in a way. If I would be in a monogamous relationship and I would like to be in a monogamous relationship and I've never been in an open relationship, I would question a lot, you know, my boyfriend being friends with a girl that he had a lot of fun with, he had really good sex with, and yeah. it's hard to believe that there is no tension, that kind of tension anymore between mm-hmm. those people. So I understand that you just don't want that risk. So the people are like cutting the connection. Yeah. Um, and I actually wanted to ask you if you, for example, you said that you like to flirt and you like to have this kind of tension yes. with different people. Uh, would you do it if Matthias would be in the same place? So let's say you're going for drinks or something. Yeah, and so we, we talked about that. Actually, when you're couple dating, you're kind of doing that with the other person or... Um, so he, and he's really getting turned on by me flirting with other people. Okay. So actually that's really nice. He, he, it's going crazy about seeing me, um, flirt with someone else or make someone else getting horny or Mm -hmm. also, also other girls, not only other men. So it's, it's really interesting. Okay. And I'm also actually, I didn't think at the beginning that I would get turned on by seeing Matthias uh, flirting with other girls, but it's really turning me on. So oh. uh, I love it. That's interesting. It's that also, it I think get... it's because you can still see that, okay, he's your partner, uh, I'm his partner, but he still has that, you know. He yeah. still can do that game. He still mm-hmm. can get people, yeah. you know, because some some people when they are in a monogamous relationship, they forget that, you know, that attraction and that playing with each other and um, the interest of just getting the curiosity of someone else. You can still do that with your partner. Like you can also when you're in a monogamous relationship, you can be flirty, just decide to be flirty with your partner Mm -hmm. just find other ways of doing it then you can spice it up uh for us it's easier because we are in a relationship so we do it with other people and actually this is one of the things that i get me myself i get the most out of the open relationship just that attention that i need and um sometimes people say that uh, that's something that you should work upon and it's not healthy to have that need of attention. And I'm like, why are you saying that? Maybe it's not healthy if it's in a negative way. But since I was a kid, I was a kid that wanted wanted love, wanted attention. And it's something that I love about myself. And it's not, a, I'm not seeking for that attention in a negative way that I'm... Mm going obsessively about it it's just that you know a spark and uh, makes your tummy uh, go around and uh, keeps you on your toes and it's it's that kind of feelings that you are looking for and i'm aware of that and uh, i just uh, accept it yeah, because there are different ways of getting attention and we are we all are doing that in one way or another. Yes. Like maybe uh one person is taking naked pictures and posting them on uh on social media yes. in order to get attention. Maybe there's another pr- uh, person that is doing uh, uh lifting like uh, body lift and yes, stuff like that definitely. and they are posting a lot of there that so to many get ways. attention. Yeah. Like maybe other people want to get attention for something that they are doing, like maybe their job, their career or anything. We are all doing that in one way or another and why is your way of getting attention wrong yeah you know exactly i don't think yeah i think getting attention it's something that it's natural people seek for attention Mm -hmm. uh i just am honest about it so i'm honest that i need that and i'm aware of it and i embrace it and also my boyfriend does so that's yeah. amazing. And I think it's so nice that you are able to have this communication between you and work it out, you know, and yes. actually make it in a fun game. It's so, so interesting. And I think it would help a lot of people to maybe realize or maybe decide if they would want to be in a in an open relationship rather than a monogamous relationship and see if that would work for them. Yes. Yeah. But I, I really think that it's really important to be aware of who you are before 
even trying maybe something like an open relationship because you really have to understand yourself and to be really honest with yourself because uh, acting upon being an, in an open relationship it will bring also a lot of issues and it will bring also a lot of questions into your life so you'll have to be really like aware of who you are and why you are doing this yeah because you will have to remind yourself all the time why you are doing this and a lot of people will question you and will judge you yeah. uh, so when that will happen you need to have your shit together and understand why you are in that situation yeah. and why is it good for you Mm -hmm. because I think it also happens when you are in those feelings of maybe jealousy or guilt or so much you have to remind yourself okay I'm doing this because I love this person but also because I love myself and I want to give myself everything that I can yes. to make myself happy yes yeah. and I mean me and Matthias we just decided okay we are doing this if at any point any of us feels like we want to stop we will talk about it and we will just decide on something together yeah. so uh, it's not something that we say okay it will be for life we will be for life in an open mm -hmm. relationship but for now it's just something that works for us and uh, it's it's great we yeah. get to experiment so much because actually like I had quite a lot of sexual um, experiences bit before being with Matthias and we also experienced a bit when we were in a monogamous mm -hmm. relationship but afterwards it was to another level like I'm another person that I didn't know if you would have asked me before if I like to play with toys for example I would have said no I never masturbate before being in an open relationship but being in an open relationship it just made us think of everything and want to try everything and you also have to decide what works for you and what not. And there are so many ways of being in an open relationship. Like, I know a lot of couples now that are in an open relationship and each of them are doing it in a bit differently. Yeah. So there is, that's also something that's important. There is not a recipe how to be in an open relationship. You have to find with your partner what works for you. Mm-hmm. I think that's mm. so important. Yes. And yeah, we are actually running out of time for okay. this episode. But we are going to do a second part in which we are going to talk about uh, the future steps. Like yes. what you're planning for the future with the open relationship. So, that will be interesting. Yes. yes. So thank you very much for being here on the podcast Thank you today. so much for having me. And yes. uh, to your listening the listeners, I hope they are uh, really satisfied with this uh, new approach. Like with... Uh, open relationships maybe they are uh, having some new thoughts on uh, what to try yeah i hope so because that's what we're trying to do here on yes. the podcast to make people have different perspectives about life and maybe they will approach them maybe they will uh, be more sure that their way of doing life is better yes but, or yeah. maybe be aware that some of their friends are doing that because i know a lot of people that are in an open relationship but don't talk with their friends because of the um, being f uh, scared that they will be judged by, the, by yeah, their friends. The social pressure. Yes. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But thank you very much for today. Thank and you so much, see Nico. You in part two. See you there. If you like this episode, make sure to subscribe to our channel to not miss any of our future episodes. And until next time, take care and stay nasty. Mm -hmm.